Hello, hello, my nasties. Welcome to another Sketchy Saturday video. Today we are going to be talking all about failures, specifically four of my recent creative failures as an artist. Before we begin, as usual, everything that I have used in the creation of the sketch will be listed down below. Most of the items can be, most if not all, right? All of these items were or are available on Amazon, but you do not necessarily have to purchase them on Amazon, I believe with the exception of the sketchbook. That one I know for a fact that I purchased directly on Amazon. But anyway, links down below if you are not interested in shopping with Amazon, you don't have to, but the items will be uh, listed below if you are interested. So let's get on into today's video. This sketch uh, is a quick one. I just sat down, kicked it out really quick. So I'm going to try, 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 fingers and all extremities crossed for me. I'm going to try to keep this under 25 minutes if possible. So let's go ahead and talk about four failures that have occurred recently that have kind of bruised my little artistic heart, shall we? Now, disclaimer, I have failed many, 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 many more times than the instances that I'm going to be focusing on today. The reality is I have failed so many times, so many ventures, so many projects that simply haven't worked out for various reasons, and that's okay, but those happened in the past. There's so many I can't even recall all of them, so these are more recent, ergo they are more fresh, and so I can speak on them a little bit clearer. Oops, 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 oops. Before the video officially begins, I need to mention that this illustration was available for my Patreon patrons. It is no longer available, but it was. So if you were a patron during the time that this was released, baby, you have it, download it, enjoy it. If you're missing it, let me know and I will get it to you. But um, I illustrated it quickly in the sketchbook and then I rendered the line art, which I will show you here on screen i did change it a little bit for my patrons i gave her a feather instead of the little star head piece that you see here but anyways that is the quick sketch i refined it for my patrons i made her beautiful and perfect with the lines and there you have it so just that that's the uh the bts those are the details on the sketch she means absolutely nothing my art is not that deep literally she was inspired by a flamingo because one of my patrons mentioned uh, a flamingo to me. So I came up with a flamingo inspired showgirl. Why? I don't know. It's just how my mind works. Okay, let's get on with the video. So the first one, and this is going to be the biggest blow, is my failed indie comic, The Harlequin Glass. The Harlequin Glass is something that I have been in love with since I was in high school. When I was in high school, I was eyeballs deep in the indie comic world. I loved indie comics goth comics, alternative press comics, zines, the works. That was my world. That was my life. That is what I wanted to do with myself. Uh, I wasn't into the glossy, the superhero comics, right? That wasn't my thing. It was definitely the independent storytellers, the the goth kids, the, the LGBT comics, like all of that sort of thing. The alternative stuff, essentially. Loved it all. Loved it all. And I worked on a story that I was passionate about something it was just super cute whimsical fun kind of a YA sort of situation um which is young adult it was a young adult kind of was it it's not really horror it's a YA young adult supernatural thriller ish mystery kind of a situation yeah that that's definitely it young adult supernatural thriller okay so I worked on that story I illustrated the first issue twice left it alone years later as an adult i revisited it i redrew it again and i fully fleshed out the outline for 12 issues and well i should say i wrote the outlines for 12 issues and fully fleshed out the first five issues i was ready to go i was working hard on this thing i was waking up super early literally at the crack of dawn to work on this and here's what happened it ended up destroying my wrist again I have chronic tendonitis, blah, 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 put the tiny violins away, I'm not asking for sympathy, but I destroyed my wrist working on that. And so it hindered my working on coloring books. And I thought, well, crap, my coloring books are what people are interested in. That is what's earning my money and, well, not all of it, but a portion of my income. 
and my comic book is over here ruining my wrist for nothing. This needs to stop. This needs to stop. I can't do this to myself physically. And so what I did is I, I said, all right, do one issue and leave it alone. Okay, I created one full issue, then I just couldn't stop. I created the second one. I published two issues of The Harlequin Glass and I was so in love with the book. I still am because the interior of the book retains that that indie comic look of the the pages being roughly Xeroxed at a copy machine at two in the morning, right? The covers are beautiful. The covers are a nice thick paper stock, whereas back in the day, the indie comics were just a, a cheap flimsy piece of paper as the cover, right? But no, no, not these. The covers were beautiful. The interior just retained that scrappy DIY look, which is what I wanted. Unfortunately, what I have learned over the years the hard way is that what I like and what I'm interested in, the world at large doesn't give a damn about. So the comic book was a flop. I did put out a call to action on several indie comic websites and people were lukewarm about, they love the story, but they were lukewarm about taking this project on because people simply don't have the discipline to work on an indie comic. And I I was telling people, hey, I'm willing to pay, what is your page rate, let's work on something, but of course, I these people, they weren't even joking. People were coming back to me with page rates of thousands of dollars. I'm like, no, baby, these are indie comics. Come on, come on. As an artist, you ain't worth thousands for a page, I'll tell you that. And of course, I couldn't pay that. So anyway, heartbroken. I put that project aside. I still keep the books on my desk and I flip through with them every once in a while because I would love to revisit that story. But in any case, that was failure number one. I have videos on my channel in which I did the 100 days of comics challenge or whatever that is. They're on my channel. Just look for them if you care. But moving on, my next failure, and this one was a huge, <laughs> an epic failure because it just, it hurt me financially. I was in the red on this one. So several years ago, it is now the norm on Etsy and on uh, Shopify and things of that nature, other platforms to integrate print on demand. Now, a couple of years ago, this was not the norm. This was new. And I thought that I had found a print on demand company that was all about the indie, the indie artists, the independent creatives and, you know, the scrappy doers and all of that. And they were giving me the opportunity to integrate my shop into Etsy, right? So people could go onto my shop, my Etsy shop, and purchase t-shirts, tote bags, whatever it is that I wanted. Now, the thing is, when it comes to these print on demands, I never recommend, I don't care what anybody tells you, these gurus online are full of shit, okay? I'm telling you that what you need to do if you open a print on demand shop is you need to limit your product offering because come on now, nobody wants coasters, a shower curtain, and a, I don't know, a lawn chair and a bath towel with your artwork on it. No, right? It's simply not relevant. I was offering my art on products that were interesting to me and that were relevant. So throw pillows, because your girl loves a throw pillow. I love to decorate with throw pillows. Uh, apparel, t-shirts, tank tops, and the like, tote bags, and then accessory pouches. That's it. I had a very limited selection of products, and that's how I left it. Unfortunately, while this company was producing good quality work, I, I purchased a sample of everything. Everything looked great. Their commission rate was very high. And with a high commission rate paired with Etsy's fees, oof. Baby, the financial hit was grotesque. When I tell you I didn't earn a penny, I did not earn a penny. In fact, I lost money on this venture. And nothing against the POD company. Again, they produce good products. But the issue that I ran into was just the exorbitant fees that I was being charged from both companies, from Etsy and the print-on-demand place. And on top of that, my personal brand was was being affected in that when customers purchase from me, they know that I am the one who's hand packaging their items. Everything is fully branded. My Etsy shop, my colors are purple. My personal brand colors are of course purple, purple and black and white essentially, purple, black and gold, whatever it is. But purple, purple, purple basically. And so when you receive a package from my Etsy shop, you expect the purple experience, yes? However, when you partner with a POD company, 
they package themselves in their ugly packaging. Nothing is branded. It's all just white on white on white. Okay. So when a customer purchases from the Carla store, they want a Carla wrapped product, but then they get this cute product, but it's haphazardly tossed into a nondescript white bag, right? And that's just not, mm, that gives me the ick a little bit. And so anyway, I gave it a shot. I was excited about it. So was my audience. I sold a lot, but unfortunately it just didn't work out. It didn't work out. My next failure was my line of acrylic pins, which I jokingly called acrylic, which I go into in one of my vlogs a while back when I talk about the pins. This is another project in which I was in the red, though not as much as I was with the print on demand. With this project, I only was in the red about 50 bucks. And the, re well, actually, was it, yeah, that seems about right, 50, it, it was no, definitely not $100. I think at the most, it may have been around $70 I was in the hole, but we'll just keep it at 50. We all know how popular enamel pins are. Enamel pins are so popular, and in recent years, acrylic pins have started hitting the market. And I thought, ooh, acrylic pins are fabulous. Now, I love an enamel pin, but full disclosure, I have attempted to create an enamel pin and I had a hideous experience with a company. I was out $350 on these pins. Now, I did get reimbursed, but my experience was so bad that I thought, wow, this is risky and I'm not always going to be guaranteed to get my money back in full if something happens like this. So I tried out those enamel pins. They didn't work out. And then I discovered acrylic pins. Your girl loves acrylic nails, acrylic everything. My apartment, I have acrylic storage everywhere. It's just part of that whole... 70s and 80s disco neo-noir cocaine chic kind of look that I'm interested in and so I thought acrylic pins are going to be adorable they are going to be an exact replication of my artwork onto acrylic super cute blah 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 well they were a fail <laughs> uh for two reasons number one the price point that I was selling them at which was nine and ten dollars which is standard for a pin when you factor in production costs and then of course Etsy's exorbitant fees, ugh, yeah, I was I wasn't I was literally making sense on these acrylic pins and not only that, they took months and months and months and months and months to sell and I had only ordered about 40 of each. There were two designs, so I had 80 total. So they took damn near 2 years to sell, right? About a year and a half or so. And with Etsy, each time you relist an item, that's another 20 some cents that you have to fork over. So if you continue to relist and relist and relist and relist every three months, you're going to lose money on a product that's only nine or $10, right? So that was a fail. And that one was unfortunate because I really liked these pins. And maybe, 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 maybe one day I'll revisit the idea. Maybe, 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 maybe because I do like it, but we'll see. This We'll lump this one into the Harlequin glass because the Harlequin glass is not dead. I would like to revise it somehow, some way. Um, but yeah, that was my line of acrylic pins. My next failure is my most recent, and this is the one that nothing is going to bruise my heart as much as the failure of the Harlequin glass, but this one definitely was another pretty bad blow, and that was diamond painting. So if you look on my channel, I last year completed a diamond painting of one of my illustrations, Bat Princess. I do not know if this diamond painting is still available on the website. I believe that it is. Take a look at, visit my website. I will have the link down below and then I will have a diamond painting section in the, the, the menu. Click on it and then you'll be redirected to the website if you would like to see it. But after years, literal years of my own audience sending me all of their love and saying, Carla, we love your art. Carla, we love your coloring books. Carla, you're great. You should make diamond paintings. Will you ever? Blah, 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 blah. I thought I would love it, guys, but I don't have the money to do it. I would love it, but, 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 but. So finally, thanks to all of you, because it were it not for the spurring of my audience, I would have never done it. So I am eternally grateful for you. 
for doing that. So please don't feel bad <laughs> if you were the ones who spurred me into this because trust me, it was it was a positive experience and it was a good learning experience despite it being a fail. So I reached out to a diamond painting company and they said, hey, cool, we'd love to give you a shot, submit about a dozen images and we'll pass those images on to our audience and see how they feel. Well, of those dozen images, a mere one illustration barely eked by for production. My art simply was not resonating with the world of diamond painting, which, I mean, I understand. I'm a, I'm a niche sort of individual. I get it. I'm a little fringe, right? I, I tell you on my channel all the time that I, my growth is slow for various reasons. I'm not high production. I'm not a people pleaser. I'm just me, right? And people love it or they hate it. And in this case, the diamond painting community just... I don't think they hated it, but they just, they weren't digging it. So, okay. Months went by and I submitted another crop of images. And I thought, well, maybe this time, maybe the second time some of my images, people are going to like crickets. I heard absolutely nothing back. So at this point, I'm thinking, okay, my diamond painting is a fail. People simply don't like my artwork in this world, which is super unfortunate because I've noticed that there's quite a bit of crossover between coloring book artists and, or coloring book colorists rather, and uh, diamond painters. So that's that on that. Those were my fails, my recent four failures. I will not dwell on any of them any more than this, simply because failures are not a bad thing. Do they hurt? Yeah. Does it suck to realize that, hey, you know what? People don't love you as much as you want them to. Yeah, that sucks too when you are a creative because the thing is, is even if people do not resonate with me personally, with my personality or whatever, I would hope that people would be able to separate art from artists and at least appreciate my artwork because honestly, I would rather people be more interested in my artwork than they are me. Why? because my artwork people can actually you know now that I say that out loud I'm not sure because I feel as though you know what no I take that back now that I'm saying it out loud I'll word it this way I'm okay if people don't like me personally uh, because those who do they take from my messaging and from my words what they need right if people are looking for inspiration or a pep talk or what have you I'm here for you in that sense, and I love that I can do that for people, but on the flip, I would also hope that my artwork is also therapeutic to people. You know, you purchase my coloring books, you're having a bad day, you grab one of my books and you just throw all your markers at the page and you just have fun, right? I can help you in different ways, so I, I think I, I don't have a preference, whether you like me more or my artwork, I mean, I just, I don't. I, I suppose... I, I'll say it like this, because talking it out definitely helps me to articulate what I'm thinking. I think I would I would hope that my artwork, if people find my artwork, that somehow leads them to me as a person, and therefore they accept the whole package, and they appreciate being part of my freak show that way, or vice versa. They enjoy my personality, and then they discover my artwork, and then we can become a big happy freak show. Yeah, does that make sense? Does that make any bit of sense? All right, I'm going to leave this video now with that. Thank you once again for hanging out, listening, and help me, helping me make sense of my own craziness. Thank you. We, we did a little of that here at the end. Uh, take this as a, as a reminder that failure is okay. Failure sucks. Failure hurts. Failure is a blow to our little sensitive artistic egos. It definitely is, but remember that I have failed a lot. So if you are trying to live an artistic life and you're finding that you keep failing and failing and you don't know why nothing is sticking and it happens to all of us, we just don't talk about it all of the time and you don't see it. Why? Because why would we talk about, why would we talk about every failure on the internet? If the world, just think about this for a moment. If your social media feed was full of everyone's constant negativity, would that make you feel better or worse? It would make you feel horrible, right? Because you would think, oh, everybody's just a mess everywhere and life just sucks. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't allow any space for you to have aspirational thoughts. Now, on the flip of that, I think it's important for 
people like me, not to say that I'm on some, you know, grand pedestal and I have an audience of millions, but I think it's important for us to remind our audience that, yeah, even we who are mildly successful, mildly, yeah, it's a low to mid-level success here. We're not, again, we're, we're not super successful. Don't get that twisted. But it's important for us to remind the audience that even we fail and fail a lot. We suck at a lot of things. And that's okay. That's okay because through all of these failures, we land on some hits. Were it not for all of these failures that I have endured, beyond the four that I mentioned today, were it not for all of the failures that came before that, I would not currently find myself in a situation where I'm exploring my passions for vintage fashion, for art, for having opened my own store. And then we are also exploring other things in the future, which we will talk about later, but There you go. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel, even if that tunnel is insanely long. (laughs) Okay? So with that, my nasties, I leave you. Be bad, be good. I don't give a damn which. Just make sure you come back in one piece. Take a look down below. Everything you need to know will always be down below. All right, shoot, shoot. Go do something fun with yourself. And it's okay if you fall on your ass. Just get up. Cliche as it sounds, just get up. Okay? I'll see you in the next one.